Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we've got a puzzle to celebrate a very special birthday. Um, puzzle on the screen is called 77, for today is in fact uh, the, birth, the 77th birthday of Ard van de Wetering, the amazing constructor from the Netherlands. Um, I think his, his Sudoku, which we featured in a video called A Sudoku with Only Four Given Digits, uh, is probably the most famous Sudoku in the world because that video has been viewed about seven and a half million times. Um, and in fact, I've just, I've just noticed this puzzle, which has, of course, this number 77 in it made up of lines, has also got four given digits if I include the seven and the seven as two digits, which I certainly do. So this is another Sudoku with only four given digits. Well done, Ard, on coming up with this. Um, the testers say, by the way, this is absolutely brilliant. So we should be in for a, a treat as always, um, which is terrific. Now I have loads of news to tell you about today. Um, let's start with the easy easy ones. So uh, Oberdin, Mark and I are returning to the uh, the Oberdin tomorrow night, 10 o'clock UK time for a live stream. We'd love to have your company. We think we're getting close to finishing the game. So hopefully that's true. Um, what next? Uh, we've got, um, oh yeah, we released a bonus, a bonus puzzle on Sudoku Pad earlier. So if you own Sudoku Pad, which you definitely should, it's a fantastic way of playing the puzzles that we feature on the channel um, and recording your times and your progress for those puzzles, as well as many other things as well. But, but, but you can create classic Sudokus in Sudoku Pad, for example, and share them with your friends. But if you, um, if you do own Sudoku Pad, we put a bonus, um, puzzle up there today uh, on Twitter. So just go to our Twitter, which is at Cryptic Cracking, and you can play a puzzle called Trolling by Spartan. And we're not trolling you there. You really can. Um, other than that, uh, there is, uh, oh yeah, some of you were asking about this puzzle, which we featured just the other day. Now this puzzle is, um, uh, it's called Yes, the Clever Equation. It's a fabulous, fabulous Sudoku by SSG. Um, and uh, some, one of the questions was, why is it called Yes, the Clever Equation? Well, what I failed to realize, but some of you clever guys did realize, is that Yes, the Clever Equation, believe it or not, is an anagram of set equivalence theory. Now, I'm not saying that set equivalence theory is important for solving this puzzle, but it might help you. There, I'm not giving you any more clues. Now, the final piece of news is perhaps the most important and the most amazing. This is, of course, hopefully you can see that on the webcam. This is a real copy of the real book, Cracking the Cryptic's Greatest Hits. This is a labor of love for Mark and I. Uh, we launched it with a Kickstarter campaign uh, ages ago, and it's been ready, the book's been ready for ages, but of course with the worldwide shipping problems, getting the books printed and shipped has been a mission, but that mission is nearly completed. The books I think have left China to be delivered. And today, if you told, if you told us on Kickstarter you wanted the PDF to get your hands on the book early, uh, it's not the physical copy, but it's an electronic copy. It's got all the puzzles in it, all the extra puzzles, all the extra puzzle hunts. You can access all the extra videos. That has gone out today. So we are sitting on tenterhooks waiting for your feedback. We hope you like it. We're sure you will. We, we've, we are absolutely thrilled with it. And um, yeah, do let us know. Do let us know. Please do. And yeah, it's... Um, a big day for us. So anyway, that's 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 news. Now let's get on with celebrating Ard's seventy seventh birthday and see what he's got in store for us. Here we go. Uh, normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, digits in green cells sum seventy seven, so they are very appropriate. Um, adjacent digits on a grey line must differ by at least four. Right. So this is Dutch whispers today, not German whispers. So there are basically, let's look at that domino there and imagine this square was a two. This square would have to be at least four away from two. So it could be six, seven, eight or nine. That would be the only options for this cell. So we had just have to make sure that adjacent cells are four apart and we're good to go. Do have a go. The way to play, of course, is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And 
<laughs> I say we've got four given digits, and we sort of do. But this is... Oh, right, no, hang on. I was about to say, how on earth do you start this? But I've just realised I've not got that many cells adding up to 77 here, have I? Nine cells adding to 77, but I can't repeat. Yes, okay, that's interesting, isn't it? So if we think about these are nine... These green, there are nine green cells. If every one of those was a nine, nine times nine is 81. That's only just higher than 77. So we can't make all of these nine because some of them share boxes. So we probably, yeah, we're gonna lose four, four numbers, aren't we? If we make these eight, nine pairs, um, four lots of um, 17 is 68. And then if we put a nine in the middle, we get 77. So we actually have, now that digit, I'm not gonna say that's a given digit. I had to do maths to get that digit. Um, but that at least gives us another digit straight away. Um, but even before that, I was, I was thinking there doesn't seem to be very much information at all. This is bizarre. How can this be unique? I mean, really, how? Because if these were German whispers lines, and the German whispers lines are very powerful. Well, you can't actually have a five on a German whispers line. But with a German whispers line, where the difference between adjacent digits on the line has to be at least five, you get this really cool parity thing going on, where the line has to oscillate between low and high digits. Because if you put a one to four in this square, this square has to be five away and then four has to be high, then this would have to be low again, etc. Now the problem with Dutch whispers is the annoying occurrence of digits like this one, which can change the parity of the line. Because you can never, because five can go on the line, it can go up or down from there. Four away from five is always one or nine. Ah, so that's, that's a good point. Five minus well, 5 plus 4 is 9, which we can't put there, so that's got to be a 1. So this square's got to be 1 or 9. Yeah, but this is exactly the problem. This is exactly the problem. This, if this was a German whispers line, these two would have to have the same parity, so they both have to be low and this would be a 1. But because this is because five is possible on the line, that could be a nine, and then the whole parity of the line changes. So we can't alternate along the line and say all these digits are low digits because of the existence of digits like five. So, well, I can't put I can't put more fives in these cells. So whatever this. Yeah, but we don't know the parity of this. This is tricky, actually. Um, let's actually work out how many cells there are on these seven line drawings. Um, so if that's if this is low and we retain parity, so if this five doesn't change parity and there are no other fives on the line, then we would expect low, 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 ah, low, but that low would be next to another low, so we know that the, we know there is a five, or more than one five, there could be, there are an odd number of fives on the seven that do change the parity, but, do we know where they live? That one could be one of them. That could be the only one of them. That would require this to be a nine. So maybe, maybe the question to ask is where we can put the, the fives on this line. Because if this is the only five I can put on the line, then this then we know that then we know that this is a nine and that would be useful so let's work that out which cells on this seven can be fives so these can't these can't that isn't though that isn't so none of those are fives now this one 
Is there a reason this can't be a 5? Yes, there is. That cannot be a 5 because if it's a 5, what's surrounding it on the line? Well, we'd have to have a 1 in one direction and a 9 on the other, and that's going to break that cell. So that's not a 5 either. What about that one? Can that be a 5? If that's a 5, no, that one can't be a 5 because there's definitely a 9 in one of those two squares. And again, you'd have to surround the 5 on the line with a 1, 9 pair, and that's going to break those squares. So that's actually very interesting. We've already got rid of, well, probably half the cells on the 7 line. Can that be a 5? No. I can immediately see that can't be a 5 because this would have to be a 1 or a 9, and it can be neither. Wow. What about, ah, uh, now that one. That one sees a 1, which is already looking possible, isn't it? And therefore, this would have to not be able to be a 9. Bobbins, that can be a 9, I think. So that is possible. I think this one is possible. What about that? No, this one is not possible because this square would have to be a 1 or a 9, and it can't be. This one? Uh, no, no. In fact, this one can't be because you'd need to put an, if it's going to change the parity, it needs to have a nine on one side of it and it can have a nine on neither side of it. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying this is a five, but I, this can't be a five. But if it is a five, it can't change the parity. That can't be a parity changing square. This one would have to have, oh no, I think this one's okay, isn't it? If this was a five and it had a one nine pair here, there's nothing wrong with that. Bobbins. <laughs> oh dear. So we're not doing very well with this line of logic, are we? What about this square? So if this, uh, that square we can rule out because that square would have to be a one or a nine. Right. So the possible changes of parity, um, it's a little bit interesting, on this seven shape are here, here, and here. Now, we know that there must be an odd number of changes of parity coming along the line, because when we came around like this, if we preserved the parity perfectly, which two changes of parity would do, then we should have hit... Uh, you know, this should have been a high digit and therefore this should have been a low digit and we weren't doing that. So either, either there is one change of parity or three changes of parity. And if there are three changes of parity, all three of these would have to be a five. And that would mean there would have to be a five in this domino by Sudoku. don't think that's actually I don't think I can rule that out either can I well oh dear <laughs> oh dear so so far we're doing appallingly badly and I have a feeling that this line here is going to be less susceptible to this sort of parity stuff because we don't well, we know there's a one on it here. That's definitely not a five, obviously. So where can you not put fives on the bottom the bottom seven shape? You can't put them in those cells. You can't put one here because that would be a one or a nine, which it can't be. Same is true of that cell, actually. That would be a one or a nine, which it can't be. And, and oh, actually, maybe this bottom line is it's already more restricted. I thought that can't be a nine. Sorry, it can't be a 5, because this would be a 1 or a 9, and it can be neither. This one would have to have a 1 and a 9 on both sides if it's going to change the parity. That looks possible, actually. So that one, I think, is possible. Uh, what about that one? No, this one, actually, this is, this is getting interesting. This one can't be a 5, because this would need to be a 1 or a 9, and there's an... 8, 9 pair ruling out 9 and a 1 here. So that can't be. That can't be either because this would need to be 9. Wow. What about that one? Now, if that is changing the parity, this has to be a 9. Hmm. 
Yeah, okay, I think that might be possible. That's very annoying. Although, the, only, the interesting thing about that is we need another one. Otherwise, we'll know one of these is a 5, because we can only change the parity an odd number of times. I'm assuming, by the way, the 7s are the same shape. They are the same shape. You can see it's just a rotation. Um, now, okay, so can we rule in or out any of... Well, that can't be a 5. <laughs> I can do that, because that C is a 5, and it's row. Um, that, oh, that one can't be, because that would need to be a 1 or a Good grief! So this line is almost better than this line, which is totally perverse. That one can't be, because that would need to be a 1 or a 9. This one. Uh, no, that one can't be either, because if that one is a 5, what's this square? A 1 or a 9? That's a 1. There's a 9 in that pair there. So this is not. Wow. So now, so this line is better. This has only got two purples on it. So there must be a five in one of those two positions, and exactly one of those two positions. Um, so if that's a five, that's a nine. If that's a five, ah, this is so clever. This is so clever. Oh my goodness, Ard, take a bow already. Take a bow already. It's your birthday, but I feel like it's mine because look at this. The red cells cannot be fives. Therefore, we can treat them, red cells, a bit like German whispers. The parity must be preserved if you're going through a string of red cells. So, what does that mean this cell is? Well, it's a low digit. It cannot be a five and it must be low because this square isn't changing the parity. But if this square is low, what's this square? Well, this must be high, it's not a five. So this is a six, seven, eight, or nine. But we know that if this is a five, it must be surrounded by a one and a nine. Now that means the nine would go here and the one would go here. So if this is a five, this is a 9. And if this is a 5, this is a 9. And now I've got a 9 vertically looking at this square, and I don't know which of these is the 5, but I do know that whichever one is the 5, I get a 9 in column 6 in box 8 looking at that square, which is now a 1. And that determines a lot of parity all over the top of this line, look. I'm just wondering if we can improve upon that as well. That feels like an enormously powerful deduction. Nine is in one of those two cells. I don't think I can tell which one. Um, this square is restricted as well, though, because that's definitely high. And it's not eight or nine, so that's only got the six or seven as a possibility. Therefore, this cannot be a four, because if it's a four, it needs to be next to a digit that's eight or nine on the line. Ah, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, let's have a look up here then and see if we can work any magic along this line now. Because we know that parity is being preserved. So this is low, 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 and then we might get a change. So all of those digits are either 1, 2, 3, or 4. Now, those two can't be 1s. That one can't be 1. Um... This one can't be a four, can it? Oh, in fact, this is nice. Look at this. Look at this. The, the, the corollary of these being low digits is that the intermediate digits, the digits between the low digits, are high. All of these have to be high. So they have to be six, seven, eight, or nine. But there's an eight, nine pair in this box. So these have been reduced to six or seven, which means you cannot put a four in either of those two squares. 
And this one, oh, this is so ridiculous. This is just beautiful. Now, this can't be a three, because if it's a three, these two digits would have to be four away from three, and they can't both be seven, so that's a two. Which means that's not a two, that's not a two. If that's a four, it needs to be next. This is, this is just sensational. Um, so this is now a three, which must be next to a seven. It can't be next to a six. That fixes this one. That's got to be four away. Therefore, it can't be a three. That's got to be a one. Um, right, so this needs to be at least eight or not. Oh, it's, it's an eight. Yeah, this digit here, by Sudoku, we can see that it has to be, sorry, it's not a nine and it's not a seven but it has to be a digit that's four away from three, so it must be an eight. And that is beautiful because that's seeing the green cells. Oh my goodness. So nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, all go into the grid. Nine by Sudoku has to go here now. It's using these nines. Um, I always get this the wrong way round when I do these puzzles. That doesn't mean this needs to be a four. This absolutely could still be two. That's not a nine, though. Um, that's not a one. So what have we done now? Have we have we got to the crux of this or not? I sort of feel like that's an enormous amount of progress. That can't be six. Uh, this nine actually is seeing some things as well, isn't it? Maybe that's what I've got to think about. Maybe I can, yes, yes, this has become a nine. Therefore, that's a nine. That's massive, <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. So now, this is the change of parity because this one can't change the parity because this can't be a nine. You can't put a nine in either of those squares. So this doesn't change the parity. The parity has changed exactly once on this seven and it's exactly there. So this doesn't change the parity. So that goes back to being red. And therefore we can. So, oh, this doesn't. Wow, wow. This five is telling us this is not a five. So that must turn red. Now, I can't change the parity twice along the line. That won't work. So this must be retaining the parity. And now the whole line is determined. Um, well, when I say it's determined, the whole line's parity is determined. So this is now low. So that's one, three, or four. It's not one. This is three or four. This is going back to being high again. So that's six, seven, or nine. No, sorry, it's not seven. I've just seen there's a seven, eight pair up here. Now, if that's six, this square can't be filled because it needs to be four away. So this is nine. Now, this is low again. So that's, oh no, I've broken it. I've broken it. How have I managed to do that? Wow, sorry. I thought all oh, my logic was good there, but it's not. I need this to be a five, but that's going to give me two. Oh, yes, I know. I understand exactly what I've done wrong as well. This is really clever. This is really clever. Let me explain. So let's go all the way back here. Now, did you spot my deliberate mistake? All right, it wasn't deliberate, but hopefully my logic, hopefully the logic I've explained so far will have enabled you if you weren't sort of if you haven't done the puzzle yourself to spot why I made that deliberate mistake. Now, I proved that this wasn't a five. And that's true. That definitely isn't a five. So this cell is not changing the parity of the line. I then said, right, I know the parity is only changing once. So that must be here. And I made this one into a red square. That was an error. Because what I didn't appreciate, I'd just been assuming this was five was changing the parity. It's not, look. Either side of this five is a one. 
So this is not changing the parity, and I need there to be a change of parity. So in fact, this is a given five, and it is changing the parity. And all of that logic I did on this line was beautiful and perfect, with the exception that I hadn't appreciated that this could be a five. So let's go back down this line and do all that again. So this has got to be a three or a four. This has got to be high, and it's a six or a nine, and it can't be a six, so that is a nine. And now look. We get the beautiful 159 switch of parity once along the line, which is, uh, is, is correct. We know it, we need it, the parity needed to change an odd number of times. And I can, I've just seen I can get a 9 here by Sudoku. I think all the 9s are now done. And yeah, okay. So this can't be a five because it can't be four away from this digit. So that's got to be the five that gets awarded purple. I'm almost thinking now because now I understand. Now I understand that I've, I've identified all changes of parity on the lines. I'm almost thinking I should change color schemes now and sort of do low high. I think I'm going to do that actually. I don't think that's such a bad idea. So let's think about that so but uh, yeah i've already got green digits as being high so every digit in this puzzle that is higher than five i am going to highlight and make green i think that's all of them all of these ones i will make a different color all the low digits that aren't five they can be oh, i've missed out that nine sorry they'll be orange right so we get here and now we can color this line fully because we know there are no more changes of parity on it. We just got this change of parity. So this squares orange, 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 orange. All of those turn orange. All of the intermediate ones therefore turn green. Um, okay. And now we need to stare at this and see what we can learn about what the world means one look at where one goes in box eight it's not here by sudoku well that's high so it's got to go in the bottom corner there therefore it goes there these are now a two three four pair now can we get any joy this can't be four we need to be surrounded by eight and nine so that's not four that gives us a two three pair so there is a four in this domino, which fixes this one as a three in the most uh, unhelpful way, actually, because that still allows this to have the opportunity to be seven. But it does mean that this square has become a three, which gives us a two here. This three must be surrounded by at least seven and eight. So where do us ah, so neither of those two squares can be six anymore? There we go. So that must be six. So this must be seven or eight. And the six must go in this square and that's done. And now we can, yeah, we can place six. Oh no, we can't, hang on. No, I, I was about to say something completely wrong. Well, six is definitely in that domino at the top. That's not wrong. I was about, I, for some reason, I thought this square couldn't be six. I was about to say six is in one of those two squares, but that would have been just absolute nonsense. Ah, that's a six by Sudoku. This column you can see has now got all its high digits. So this must be a low digit because it can't be a five. So that's a two, three or a four. Um, Okay, so probably I should focus more on these lines because these lines are where we're going to get disambiguations, aren't they? So this square is high and it's a six or a seven. And that is very important because what can this square not be? It cannot be four. This would need to be eight or nine. So that's a two. That's a four. Ooh, so that must be eight now. That does seem to be possible. And it's the only possible digit. And that 8 is disambiguating the 8 and the 7. That's no longer an 8. So now we've got a 6-7 pair here. These two have both got to be orange as a result. We'll make all of these equal to 2, 3 and 4 and take another stair. That's not 2. Um, this is a 3-4 pair. So that is 2. That's not putting any pressure on this digit. 
top digit here is a 6 or a 7, and we don't know which. Oh, but this needs to be a low digit in order to make sure we've got four low digits in this column. So that must be another high digit, and that must therefore be a 6 or a 7. And those go green as a result. OK, so let's have a look. Can that be a 4? The answer is surely no, because this can't be an 8. This 3 is giving us this digit. Yeah, do some Sudoku, Simon. It might help you. This square here has got to be a 4. My phone is buzzing at me. Um, and I can't concentrate on that. I need to concentrate on other things. <laughs> right, so what did we learn there? We got a 2 or a 3 here. Now, if that's a 3, that would have to be a 7. Oh, OK. Now, th well, that's at least a, a high-ish low digit. So this has got to be at least 7. Oh, but it can be 7 or 8, I think. Can't see why that can't be 7 or 8. This square is low and is not a 2. So that is 1, 3 or 4. And if that's a 4, that can be an 8. So we're still not quite there. We're doing OK. This square is obviously a bit of a write-in. That's a 7 and it's green. These two squares have got to be a 3-4 pair. There's now a 3-4 pair in column 8. And can we do any more magic? What are those squares? 4, 5 and 6 to complete these cells. We know that's not 5. That's not 6. And if this is a 4, 5, 6 triple, this is a 3. And that gives us the 3, 4 at the bottom. That 4 bounces up here and gives us a 5. <laughs> um... Five, 5 deserves to be purple, doesn't it? don't know if we can do the 4 and the 6, but we still need 1s, 2s and 7s into those squares. So that's a naked single. That's a 7. Goes green. These are a 1, 2 pair. We can do that. 2 and 1 go in the grid. Both go orange. There must be a 3 over here, which we know where, we know which one it is. It goes, and that's 3 in the corner. That's 3 in the spotlight. <laughs> Losing its religion. Oh, my voice isn't up to singing at all. I mean, it's rarely up for singing, but um, but yeah, it's particularly bad at the moment. Anyway, let's have a look. We've now got one four pair here. So this square here is a naked single. It can't be three. It can't be the four that needs to exist in one of these squares. So that must be a two. Therefore, that's not a two. If this is not a two, how could this be a six? It cannot be. If this is 3, it needs to be at least 4 different. So that's become a 7. That's a 6. This now can't be a 3. Everything's getting disambiguated. No famous last words. It's not. OK, what do we do then? We need a 3, 4 and a 5 in this. So this is 4 or 5. And that's 4 or 5 as well, actually. I see. So this is a naked single or a hidden single in this column. This is a 3. Um, that's on the line. It doesn't tell us what this digit is. 7 and 8 are both 4 away from 3. Uh, we need to get... Ah, this 1 is going to be useful. That's giving us a 4 here, which forces this to be 8. And now probably... Yeah, this is an 8 by Sudoku. That's a 7. 8 goes green. This column looks very interesting, doesn't it? We've got to put 2 and 7 into it so we can do that. 7 and 2. Let's put the colours in. Um, this 4 is giving me the 6 and the 4. We can put the colours in for those as well. Although not that colour, that's the wrong colour. <laughs> Make sure the 6 is the green one. Uh, this square here now is a 3. And we need to put 1, 5 and 6 into those squares. Which surprisingly, I, I can do some eliminations, but I don't think... I don't think I can actually do those. So this square is a 1 or a 6. This square is a 1 or a 5. No. What about this column then? 1 and 4. Ah, so the, where does the 1 go in this column? It's got to go there. This is a 4. That's a 5. That's a 1. That's a 6. That's a 1. That's a 5. That's a 6. That's better. So that's a 2 now. I'm going to clear up the colouring in a moment. This has got to be 7 and 5, and we can see the order. 
Good grief. Ah, and that's got to be finished off. That's six and seven. So let's go all the low digits. We can highlight those, turn them orange. Uh, all the high digits, they have to be green. All of the middle digits have to be purple. And that is how to solve just another wonderful, wonderful Sudoku from the magnificent hard vendor vatering. Um, I mean, what to say about that? We had, we did have four given digits in the loosest possible sense, because these big sevens, it's very hard initially to believe they can work the magic that they do. Um, literally, there are two digits on these sevens, and that's enough to force the whole pattern of the grid. It's really, really clever. The selection of the positioning of this five is, is it has done wonders. I mean, it's barely comprehensible, frankly, that this can have a unique solution. But this five seemed to rule out fives from all of the correct squares. Once you had a little bit of hope with the eights and nines, which the 77 total gave us. And I love the idea that you can sort of, you have to think about how the parity flicks round on the sevens. And you can and you can actually force it to work. And the, these five, well, one of, I think it was one of those two cells having to be a change of parity, forcing a nine into this domino. That's the key. That's the key step. And that was a thing of great beauty. It's magnificent, isn't it? Let me know in the comments how you got on. Do wish Ard a very happy birthday. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.